I sound like I'm on? Okay, good. All right, well, good morning, and um, uh, sorry for the delay, uh, but this is, call, we'll call to order the Ventura County Air Pollution Control Board meeting of Tuesday, September 9th, and if we could all stand and pledge to our flag in respect for the upcoming September 11th date. Recognition. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Then next item before us, the minutes of the meeting and special meetings of June 10th and June 24th are before us. So moved. Motion and a second for approval. Any uh, objections, questions, concerns? Uh, the is to the 10th, okay, to the 24th. Okay, an abstention from Mr. Miller and on the 10th, and okay on the 24th. Hearing no others, those are approved. Next up, public and consent agenda comments. Do we have any cards submitted for public comment? <laughs> Under public comment? Anyone in the public wishing to address the district board? Seeing no one step forward, we will move ahead to um, item four, board comments. <laughs> there are board comments. Yes, I know there are. Supervisor um, Parks. Thank you. Uh, I just would like to have maybe on our next agenda a look at AB 2766. I recently attended a uh, forum on uh, AB 32, which talked about the uh, city of Riverside has allowed free transit passes for all their employees using funds from this and I thought that'd be great if uh, the cities and county employees could also read those kind of benefits. So if you could let us know what kind of funding is available, <coughs> if we can do something like that, I think that would be really helpful for helping, among other things, air pollution. Okay. Yes. I'd also like to see how this can review uh, SB 375. Is that Thirty-two. Uh, and there's some things in there. I don't know if I just read that 64-page document, but some things that will affect us. I think it is a look out. Okay. Other comments? Okay, I too would like to. Um, we spoke about this at the board meeting. The issues on um, SB 375 are going to be important to um, planning departments our Air Pollution Control Board, our Transportation Commission, they, they, in essence that enabling legislation that comes out of um, uh, AB 32 will call for us to have regional dialogue and cooperation and sustainable community um, concepts in how we work with our general plans and transportation corridors. So I think it would be valuable to have and, and ask the CEO this morning to, to reach out to um, our air pollution control district uh, leadership, um, transportation leadership, start having some of those um, cross-corridor dialogues about what does um, SB 375, what will it challenge us in the future, so, Chair, yeah. Also, there may be some elements in that bill that would put mandatory funds, uh, mandatory uh, requirements for us that are maybe at the hospital, and that's why I'm having Mm -hmm. Others? Comments on that? Um, I'd like to just comment on, on the August edition of Skylines where we wished ourselves happy birthday um, for our 40th. And I, and I looked at that and I said, whoa. But it was a happy 40th APCD anniversary of the origin of the United States Environmental Protection Act creating the districts. So I expect you have all read that, but thanks to um, the publication, I hope that the public is also aware of the work that's been underway and will continue to do what we can to improve our air quality in the basin. Okay. All right, no further board comments. Uh, we do not have anything scheduled for a closed session. And we'll move into our regular agenda, which is item number six, recognition of Robert Shackman. MD for 27 years of service on the Air Pollution Control District Hearing Board. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Board. I'm Keith Duvall representing the Air Pollution Control District and 
I'd like to have Dr. Shackman come down and join me. Uh, for 27 years, Dr. Shackman uh, served on the APCD hearing board as the medical professional. Uh, last year, Dr. Shackman decided it was time to retire from the board, unfortunate for the district. Uh, Dr. Shackman participated in hundreds of hearing board cases. This morning, I tried to do a quick count, and I only was able to go back to about 1985 or 86, and there was over 250 cases. So. A uh, big volume of cases that he participated in. Uh, his decisions were always fair and balanced, but ultimately Dr. Shackman was always looking to make sure that the public's, uh, Ventura County public's health was always protected. That was his ultimate goal in his decisions. Uh, the APCD would like to give this award to Dr. Shackman uh, to express our gratitude for your service to the Air Pollution Control District and the citizens of Ventura County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duvall. I'd like to just say a few words in appreciation. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, recognition. Uh, I appreciate having had the uh, privilege of being allowed to serve for so many terms. So I thank uh, this board and all your predecessor appointing authorities for uh, having had that uh, confidence in me and uh, allowing me to uh, serve 27 years in this, uh, this capacity, this quasi-judicial board. Uh, I think it's contributed to the improvement in air quality that we've seen over that period of time. Uh, the board with Mr. Duval and uh, his predecessors uh, worked in a cooperative way uh, with the businesses and the uh, government uh, entities that came before the board so that there was a sense of uh, cooperative effort to getting to uh, cleaner air for Ventura County. And I want to say just a few more words about the, the staff I all ha had the opportunity to work with because uh, they were excellent. The APCD staff were wonderful people to work with. The uh, members of the board were great people to work with also. So this was a very fine experience and I'm looking at Roberta Rodriguez, and I could not quit without saying that she was there as I was there and was always uh, uh, superior support for the work we had to do. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, want to yeah. add something? Dr. Shackman, um, I, I just wanted to tell you, it, your position on the committee is, is, is just absolutely essential. And I don't think it's at all possible for us with this award or anything else to, uh, to properly recognize the contribution you've made over 27 years. I've, over and over again, as different disputes took place over the last 15 years that I was involved, the fact that you were able to document and identify credible reasons, it really made it easier for the regulated community to accept uh, a rule or a regulation, et cetera. So uh, we can't thank you properly, and I don't think any of us can ever measure how much positive impact you had. But you know, you talk about one of the silent heroes in Ventura County. Mm -hmm. You certainly are one of those, and I just want to sincerely, on behalf of everybody that's benefited from this uh, improved air quality that you've directly contributed to, say thank you very much. Well, Mr. Bennett, thank you uh, very much for those kind words. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on to item seven, which is a public hearing regarding proposed amended rule 72. Chair Long, Vegas. members of the board, I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. The Federal Clean Air Act requires the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to establish new source performance standards, or NSPSs, for sources that emit pollutants that come under a national ambient air quality standard. EPL is also required to establish standards known as National Emission Standards for Hazardous Air Pollutants, or NESHAPs, for pollutants that are not subject to an ambient air quality standard but could be hazardous. The authority to implement these regulations is delegated to local air districts and states on a case-by-case -case basis, and the district rules that implement these are Rule 72 for the New Source Performance Standards and Rule 73 for the NESHAPs. Uh, we're proposing to update both of these rules. References to 13 delegated NSPSs are being amended, 
and subpart XX, which regulated bulk gasoline terminals, is proposed for deletion, and this is because of a, a difference that cannot be worked out between the US EPA and the California Air Resources Board on tank testing. In addition, we're requesting delegation of four new standards. Oh. Although two of these standards actually would apply to sources in Ventura County, uh, on each case, the district rule that also governs these sources is more stringent, so these changes are going to have no significant impact on the regulated community. In addition, there's one amended NESHAP, and it's a very minor change that's not going to have a significant impact on any regulated facility. The advisory committee unanimously recommended adoption of these uh, amendments, and that's all I have. Okay, are there any questions? And as you see in the staff report, there wasn't a workshop held on these because they were considered non-controversial. That's correct. So, um, any public cards submitted? No. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Brennan? Motion and a second to uh, approve the recommended actions. Any objection to that motion? Okay. It is approved. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Villegas. Item number eight, public hearing regarding proposed amended rule 230. Health and Safety Code sections 39150 through 39153 were chaptered in 1996 and required local air districts to implement a program where we would issue a notice to comply or an NTC instead of a notice of violation for a minor violation. As a result, your board adopted Rule 230. NTCs are issued for minor infractions including procedural and administrative violations. While no payments or penalties are imposed with an NTC, they are required uh, to comply within 30 days on the maximum end. They're very popular with the regulated community because minor violations are resolved at the appropriate level of enforcement. Health and Safety Code sections 39150 to 39153 did have a sunset date of January 1, 2006, and hence are no longer in effect. To ensure that Rule 230 remains legal, the proposed rule action would delete references to those health and safety codes and adjust the rule accordingly so we can keep this program rolling. The advisory committee unanimously recommended these amendments to Rule 230, and we've had no negative comments. I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay, are there questions on this item? Any cards submitted for comment? Okay. Pleasure of the Commission. I do have just one, one question. Mm -hmm. How often do we issue notices to comply? We may issue uh, one or two notices to comply every week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, so is there anything, what significance is going to be different than this? We're just going to keep doing what we did? Exactly. Nothing else. That's right. Just get rid of the sunset closet tonight. That's right. We believe it's a good program. It's no longer mandated, but we'd like to keep it. Okay. Okay. Motion and a second to adopt the recommended action. Any objection to that motion? Okay. Hearing none, it is adopted. And we'll move on to item nine public hearing to consider adoption of fiscal year 08 09 service rates and fees. Pursuant to Health and Safety Code Section 42311, the district is permitted to recover its costs for services rendered in form of fees when providing services pursuant to the Federal Cleaner Act and the California Cleaner Act. The three main types of charges in the district's service rates and fees are service hourly rates, duplication fees, and miscellaneous fees. Service hourly rates reflect the per hour cost of a particular worker classification including salary benefits and allocated overhead. Duplication fees consist of duplication charges for Public Records Act requests and subpoenaed records, and miscellaneous fees include charges for bad checks and witness fees. In fiscal year 2008, the average increase in service hourly rates was only two-tenths of one percent, but it's very important to note that the hourly rate for the Air Pollution Control District engineer actually decreased and this is the basis for the permit processing fees, which by far and large makes up the majority of hourly fees we assessed, 
So the regulated community will actually see a very small fee decrease during this fiscal year. And the reason that happened, I know you're probably wondering, well, salaries did increase, but the fact that we've uh, had the reduction in force and we have many, substantially uh, fewer mm -hmm. management employees is the, the overhead dropped and it more than slight offset the uh, increase in salary. So. Very good. Questions, yes? No questions, just that it's very, not very often we see fees in any government body go down. Yeah. And I think this is a, a great concept, what do you call it, for you, and helping get these fees down. I think that uh, I'm right away, I don't think anybody's going to object to this if we say, I move that we oppose cash recommendation. Second. Motion, second. Any objection? None of that. None? <laughs> Thank you. Good work. Can you come up with some more? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Item number 10 um, is the 2008 Clean Air Fund Project Electric Mobility Vehicles. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Stan Cowan, representing the district. The Clean Air Fund was established in 92 with a $1.5 million donation from the 3M company. Uh, right now, we are uh, using the permanent endowment for grant monies. We are entitled to a 5% of that amount, which is about $750,000. It comes out to about $30,000 per year for Clean Air Fund grants. Uh, this particular item is a proposed grant for the Ventura Police Department. It will provide two electric mobility vehicles at a total cost of about $24,299. Uh, these vehicles are similar to the Segway, except they're a three-wheel vehicle and uh, they, they're specially outfitted for the police department. They have special lights and sirens, and their maximum speed is about 25 miles per hour. Uh, this project will support the Ventura City E-Patrol program, which replaces traditional gasoline vehicles with electric, with electric vehicles. Uh, they'll be used in this uh, downtown Ventura and on the schools with their resource program. Uh, this is a, a good demonstration program uh, both for air quality uh, and to help the local community and uh, to spur the use of zero emission technology. Uh, the proposal was recommended by your advisory committee for the Clean Air Fund on July 28th and at the same time uh, we are going to recommend that a previous project that was approved for the Ventura Police Department for three electric bicycles be used for this project instead and that was a 7000 $92 project. I have to answer any questions. Questions? Mr. Foy? Madam Chair, uh, rumor has it that uh, the reason they went to three wheels is because Councilman Brennan tried to ride the two wheel one and, uh, uh, <laughs> and fell yeah, off. He wasn't capable of doing that, huh? Mr. Foy, you had a question? Well, okay, this is, I think this is great. Um, now, there's a lot of the cities in the county. <laughs> is the right. rest of the money going to be coming that comes next year to other cities or what? Well, if you apply, you can, you know. Have to and apply? All the different cities have to apply? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. I think yeah. that's a great opportunity. That's good. I just want to keep it this page. <laughs> Mr. Brennan? I would only make a quick comment. Um, I did have an opportunity to ride the vehicle in the <laughs> fair parade two years, two years ago. <laughs> I told you. I was And actually, it was amazing. And the one thing, and, uh, and then the vehicle was used in demonstration at the, public, at, at the fairgrounds, just to be patrolling during the fair. And the officers in place, people came up and completely broke down the barriers. In fact, the officers were almost overpowered by people coming toward them. You know how officers generally are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the nature of, of uh, public uh, safety, <laughs> that people just asked about the vehicle day in, day out. They turned into PR people more than anything else. But this start on this program has initiated a whole study about what, how we operate our public safety and our fuel and how we really look at policing as a whole. Uh, the fact is, as we all know, those op cars are running 24 hours a day on our streets, hundreds of thousands of miles a year. Um, we're looking at doing a hybrid cars now and a whole opportunity because the whole idea of pursuit has changed. You don't need super high-powered vehicles to go after people because we're not doing that, or as most of us are not doing that anymore as, uh, because of, uh, um, of uh, uh, worried about uh, endangering other folks. So. This ability, this is really a starting point, and I appreciate the board's support, but um, I'll be happy to report back over time as it's going forward. Good. Was there, a, Mr. Morgan made a motion and a second? Second. And a second. Any objection to that? Hearing none? Great. So ordered. Thank you. Item number 11 is 2008 Clean Air 
Fund Project Compressed Natural Gas Vehicle Home Fueling. This is another Clean Air Fund project. Uh, this proposed grant would incentivize the purchase of installing a home uh, natural gas vehicle refueling device. Uh, this particular grant is for two rebates, $2,000 rebates, uh, to two individuals, uh, one in, in uh, Oxnard, and, I'm sorry, one in, in Simi Valley, one in Camarillo. Uh, these grants will help spur the purchase of natural gas vehicles, uh, including the Honda Civic GX, which is uh, for sale currently, uh, provide more convenient fueling, reduce emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, reduce um, use of imported oil. Uh, this proposal was all, also recommended by the Clean Air Fund Advisory Committee on July 28th. Uh, I also need to point out that the recommended action number three uh, should specify the count, accounting transaction for this grant program should use the Special Revenue Fund 7002 air pollution grants for fiscal year 2008-2009. This was inadvertently omitted from the, the board letter, so we need to use this, we need to specify this fund for this program. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions? I have one. Um, it says that Mr. George hasn't yet gained his approvals for the resident, residential installation in Camarillo. Um, has that changed any since the board left? Yeah, I just heard recently that uh, the, the Air Resources Board has started granting waivers to uh, Ventura County, so they will be issuing uh, permits for these, this kind of equipment in, in the county. So going forward, we should have uh, more applicants. Okay. Yes, Mr. Sharkey. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I've read this over a couple of times, and I'm not sure I really understand this. Uh, we're giving $2,000 a piece to two guys that have CNG cars mm -hmm. to install in their homes for their own personal use. It will not be available to the public. Right. Why isn't this a gift of public funds? Uh, it, well, it's, it's to incentivize the, the purchase of these vehicles. No, I, I, I understand yeah. that, but I want, I they're, they're actually not public funds. Okay. The, these are funds that were donated by 3M and they're held by the Community Foundation. These are not district monies. Actually, staff, our role, the Clean Air Fund Advisory Committee makes these recommendations. We are basically technical staff to provi provide analysis to the Clean Air Fund Advisory Committee. And the agreement that was set up between 3M and the Community Foundation, actually, <laughs> the district and the board are not parties to this agreement but the actual purse strings are held by the Air Pollution Control Board. It's an interesting setup. Well, that's, uh, it, 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 that's interesting. I'd feel a lot better about this if the public if it was public access to this. I mean, we have, we've got 8,000 households in Port Wainimi, more or less. Um, I mean, could we, retro, could we retrofit all of them <laughs> if we wanted to? If we had that funds, if I think we could, yeah. Um, the, this is similar to a program in the South Coast Air Quality District as well. So. Yeah. 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 It, it just seems like an odd way to go about this, and, and I've got I've got some real philosophical yeah. yeah. I've got some philosophical problems with, with, with doing it this way. Uh, I'm not sure it's, a, it's a, an especially efficient use of the funds. Uh, apparently, we don't. It's not our money. I mean, <laughs> but uh, I I just it just seems uh, if this money were put towards public filling stations, it would go a lot further. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I just got a little problem with, with, uh, with uh, this, this approach. So, Mr. Morgan? There you go. I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Charlie, because I feel the same way. Uh, we are lacking CNG and other types of uh, alternative fuel stations. That's one of what's holding us up on these car, on our different cars, all the fuel cars. Uh, I spoke with, the, with Doug Baylor from BCTC uh, two months ago. Uh, regarding use, use of their way stations, rest day stops for the big up the trucks, and some of their own land, he suggested that they own one of the freeways of access to, to uh, lease out, if nothing else, lease out to alternative fuels altogether, where people can know where to go into a station and, hit, and know where to go to get those alternative fuels. Um, I think we need to be pursuing something like that so we can start to set, if nothing else, let's get ahead of the shop here in Ventura County and see if we can put something together that can promote the cars. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a public uh, fueling facility in Oxnard, but they closed down because there, there weren't enough people who were using it. Mm -hmm. They weren't next to the freeway, 
Now, that's, that's right. You have to find them. I'm yeah. talking about Caltrans things are easily accessible, and everybody knows where they are, especially trucks are being retrofitted in the, down in the uh, Los Angeles area right now. Mm -hmm. What was it, 16,000 trucks? Yep. <coughs> where are they going to fuel up here? Now, if you've got these easy access places. I, I'm not I'm sure it has to be a separate Caltrans, but if we made a commitment with a station that's close to the freeway and everything else, and when they advertise it looks like it, I think it would be better use of that, that those it funds. Be tr it has to be tr able to truck. a lot of trucks there. So that's the key. And we don't have many of those. We look at that. Ventura County, the one for people that do have, one agency that does have is the Caltrans. Yeah. And we're easily accessed with trucks and stuff. But it's just hard to find places that can have truck, a lot of trucks come off the fuel. Mm -hmm. Mr. Holden? I, I'd be curious, the... Uh, the technology, because the uh, we're currently out re re outfitting the uh, Gold Coast Transit Center for a new a new uh, fueling station, and uh, I'd be curious with them. Those are quite technical, cumbersome, especially when you get into trucks. I, I I'd be curious to see. I understand on a residential unit where it may be one thing, but uh, we're spending I think three million dollars on on our fueling station uh, as we upgrade it. Uh, I'd be curious to see what it what these stations actually uh, cost to put into production, and what what is the total cost on a residential unit that they six six thousand dollars. Six thousand. So this is the third to yeah. do the installation. And I think when you get into trucks and commercial, Plus I think it. Uh, I'd be curious to maybe some kind of a report on what that would involve. Uh, when we, you know, two thousand dollars is two thousand dollars, and if it's two thousand towards six, it's one thing. If it's two thousand towards, you know, a million, then it probably is a little different consideration. One of the things that we're looking at, not, I'm talking about uh, not government running it, I'm talking about leasing out, letting someone else run it. Now, I'm, I'm just talking about the actual physical equipment. I mean, the uh, the, the purchase of the equipment and, and the... In the, uh, the gas station's a gas station. All the kinds of no, CNG is, is much different. CNG requires, uh, you have two methods. You can go with electric uh, generators or you can go with gas. We're converting to electric, but uh, there, it's a compressing station. You actually take the grass out of the gallon ground, you compress it, and then put it in the vehicle. And, and with the buses, it, uh, it's one process. Uh, and, and then you've got uh, significant maintenance. It's, 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 that's why I was asking. I, I don't know how they've gotten these home units to be so affordable when, when the uh, commercial truck type uh, uh, filling stations are so technically cumbersome. Yeah, the, these home ones, these are very similar. We, we actually have three home units maybe home units on steroids. They're slightly larger ones at the district to support our fleet, our fleet of CNG Honda Civics that the inspectors use. And they, they have no storage capability, so they're slow fill. I mean, you, you can't pull up and get a charge. You pull up and leave the vehicle well, overnight. And the, right when you take out the storage tanks, the cost uh, drops dramatically. So the, it would be unreasonable to expect to do a stop and fill type exactly. situation. Exactly. These are overnight Without units. the technology of... So they're just filling off their own home. That's right. They're homing, They're paying their own utility bill. So. And, and the other the other component of this that we, for a later discussion, but the the quality of gas is an issue because, as you know, our mm -hmm. our transit uh, system was shut down for a week because uh, we were receiving a gas that was not uh, uh, high enough quality to use in the vehicle. So this this requirement of of Camarillo, I think, was based on that fact that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be curious to see how the manufacturers deal with, with the automobiles. Yeah, it's less of an issue with light duty vehicles than it is with the heavy duties. Right. And it's an issue specific to the western portion of the county. And it's because some of the gas that's locally produced from our offshore oil and our local onshore doesn't meet the <coughs> pipeline quality that we're getting from Texas and the Rockies that is feeding the most of the rest Actually, of California. Actually, the, the, the uh, poor quality that we received last time was up. Uh, up uh, on onshore on Goleta, so it could have been it exists yeah. all over. So. Yeah, it's a it's a much bigger yeah, problem yeah. in Santa Barbara County. Hmm. And, and lastly, I just want to point out that these recommendations on, on the Cleaner Fund projects are not staff recommendations. These are from the Cleaner Fund Advisory Committee. Is there um, is there some way that we can encourage one of these stations? I realize it's by application. You know, if someone submits an application, we'll consider it. But is there a way we can be proactive and maybe include um, biodiesel too? Or is this just we have to wait and see what the applications are? Uh, I think I think you, you, the market's going to probably drive for mm -hmm. someone to come in with a commercial station such as we had in Oxnard and Fleet Star before. 
I mean, it's a substanti substantial amount of capital, and, and they're basically going to look for that demand. And right now you're seeing that demand more in the Los Angeles area because that's where Honda is actively marketing the, the light-duty vehicles. But you are starting to see other alternative fuels, especially, you know, liquefied natural gas and the trash haulers here and then the, the natural gas, the large fleets. But I, I think as you, if you start to see it with some of the uh, regulations that could potentially affect port trucks, et cetera, you, you may see some drive towards <coughs> commercial fueling. And I, I know this isn't the item before us, but I don't know if anyone wants to make a motion on it. I don't. Um, I have a question as to the city permitting process. There is no permitting process required from the cities to have something like this put in their garage? Or? I would think there would have to be. Yep. Yeah. yeah, because aren't you having to compress this gas and potentially explosive? Yeah. Yeah. I, think you're yeah. I would assume a building permit would be required. But we don't know if these applicants have gone through to the cities to ask about that yet or anything, mm -hmm. huh? No, we don't. Yeah. Yeah, an interesting one this may not be ripe for action today. I don't okay. know what the other board members feel, but okay. I, 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 I want to make sure we check that out a little carefully. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is organization contracted with us. So how, how did how did we get to the end of this? The, the gas company they, they they apply to the gas company to get a permit to do that. Then there's there's a, a contractor that it work, is working with. Actually, it's Honda. Uh, is working as a partnership with the installer, and that's the the, huh. the vendors of fill company or the fuel maker rather, and so it's all been it's all certified. They have to go through do proper permits and so forth. And normally we'll check and make sure that everything's uh, approved before we give them a check. It's a rebate type thing. So once it's installed and, and passes inspection, then uh, the rebate's issued. Yes. I can't do this until we actually check this out. Did you, did you staff see any problems with this being delayed? Because uh, we don't meet in October. Right. That means this thing doesn't get approved if it gets approved until. I, I think. Well, in, in both cases, the vehicle owners own the vehicle, so we're we're getting the air quality benefit. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I think if they got two thousand dollars a few months later, they would still be quite pleased. So I'm not. I'm not seeing. I, no one's. I don't. I'm not getting the sense anyone's going to return their vehicle to the dealership <laughs> based on whether or not this is approved. Can Mike? I have a question. Um, can this also be used by city, like say in a, in a courtyard, uh, where people can come refuel at the courtyard? That way, you're not around other other houses. It's. Can that be also a possibility. I think it is. I mean, I, we we use them at our facility. We have three fuel makers. So we could talk to these people and say, let's maybe. You know, make a deal. Go through the city and, and put a station there of some type. Refuel yeah, hey. Having it's a slow fill, so they need to stay overnight yeah, yeah, in the garage. Yeah. And having watched Honda move this this technology the last ten years at the League of Cities and the alternative fuel and the conference I'm going to tomorrow, this is a huge step in the right direction. There's no doubt about it. Um, the fact that. You know, it's a public money, it's a generator, but the, 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 for them to be able to do it, they come home, park your car in the garage, they get up in the morning and it's fueled up and they go. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, right now mm -hmm. we have LNG, we, we spent almost three years trying to get a plant built for our trash trucks. I mean, it's, this is very, very difficult. The fact that we've got individuals wanting to start it, I think, in my mind, having watched this technology and with Honda being a major technological partner, to me it's a great step in the right direction. I think that our board, that our advisory board has recommended is also. Is that right, Mike? That's right. The Cleaner no, Fund no, Advisory no. Committee. Stood. So I, I thought it was more of a safety issue, though. That's I, what I'm looking it's, at right now. Uh, it's it's not a safety issue. These are installed. I mean, they have them. But certainly, I'm willing to hold off if that's a concern. But I mean, I, I think if they don't get the permit, because it's a safety issue, we don't give the money away. So I think at this point, we're basically as a board saying we advocate clean technologies. Let's step forward. We're not looking to have somebody bootleg something into the garage and then get a check and come back. This is certified. <laughs> if we, I'm going. I, I, I just, I, I just want to be careful that we make sure we're paying attention to what our role here is in this situation. We've just been asked to be a conduit 
you know, to pass this money through and have some technical expertise. We're not out there, you know, permitting this project or anything. This project's going to have to get permitted by this by mm -hmm. by the by the proper agencies. But I think we should be a little bit cautious here if we sort of say, well, we've got all kinds of things we'd rather do with the money, or you know, all of those kind of things. That's that's not our role, and people are not going to be very likely to want to partner with the Air Pollution Control District if 3M says, look, we're going to give some money to the Community Foundation, and the Air Pollution Control District is only going to do some technical, you know, steps for us. Um, I just think that that you know. We're, you know, because we're dreaming about some other things we'd like to do, we may be really inserting ourselves in a, inappropriately, we've, we, you know, in, in this one. We can push push this technology and all this other stuff our, on, our, on our own behalf, but I would encourage us not to interfere with what looks like a very healthy, you know, community process. Madam Chair, just a, a Mr. last Holmes. comment. I, I think the we don't want to confuse the technologies, the commercial fueling stations, and, and I think what Honda's doing here is they're actually trying to create a technology that will actually uh, allow CNG to be used uh, because people will not have to go to uh, a fueling station. You're not going to have the millions of dollars outlay to provide those fueling stations. If they come up with a system that can be done at home, uh, then you've now opened a new market for people that will consider it that would not have considered it before based on lack of access. But interestingly enough, I think the key here is that the amount of time it takes to fuel, you don't create the same hazard you do when you have a compressed natural f gas fueling station of the commercial type. Uh, I would imagine these, I don't know everything about them, but I, I know it's a different uh, technology. So I, I, I don't think safety, as far as my concern, should be the issue, given all the, the layers of, of permitting we already have on, on, the, on the issue. But uh, safety is sure a question. If the funding comes from the Community Foundation and staff is acting as a technical advisor, why is this board then in a position to authorize the use of the funds? Why is the Community Foundation itself just granting the money? <laughs> Interesting way, enough. The way 3M and the Community Foundation mm -hmm. set this up is, and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, the predecessor, our Jim Thonis, from county council, you know, it, we always thought it was odd that here the, the air board and staff have been, you know, designated to do these duties, and, and we're not part of that agreement. The agreement was between 3M and the community foundation, and it said set up a cleaner fund advisory committee. Uh, because of that, uh, the district actually and, and your board went through the process of a, of appointing the people, and we provide staff support. But the agreement specified that the air pollution control board. Would actually make the recommendation on the, the final recommendation on the funding to the community foundation, and they issue the checks. And I, I, I have to tell you, it is, it is extremely odd to be tasked with something when you're not a you know a party to the agreement. But uh, that's how we've been operating for about so we 15 really years. No, we don't. Yeah. We don't have much story to change anything. So I, I would offer, if we don't like this arrangement. Approve this, and if we want to say, "Hey, don't do this in the future," that's fine. But, but I, I just think it would be inappropriate. But quite frankly, I, I can see. Bottom line is, this is going to be good for the air quality in the long run of Ventura County, and 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 safety is not what we're uh, we're, we're we're being asked to evaluate here, right? And if uh, the city's permitted, that's I'm their not, challenge. It's going to be in our city, right? And safety does become a factor to me all of a sudden. Uh, not because us, I like the idea, but has anyone looked at this whole apparatus yet and see how it works? Has well, anyone well, reviewed it and seen it? Well, Madam Chair, it, it, just for some thing, isn't that the responsibility of the individual cities? Yeah. Will we be process? notified that they're doing that? Well, Sometimes they, they go yeah, around they, the corner. They have to pull a permit from the gas. Anytime you do gas mm -hmm. or electrical, you have to pull a permit. So this is going to be under the auspices of individual cities' well, permitting process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, this is I agree. I agree with the. Uh, Supervisor Bennett, I, you know that would be like us having to go to every gas station. If we have, if we put devices in gas stations that reduces the air pollution, are we now responsible for monitoring the safety of those gas stations versus what is in place already, which is the layers of bureaucracy that they go that through monitor, right. to provide safe gas stations? In this case, there's no layer of bureaucracy. It's just no, there is. It's, no, it's, it's a gas. It's a natural gas modification that has to go through your permitting that's process. That's what I'm saying. Except the city. City would be the only one to have to look at. Okay, I just want to make sure because sometimes pools get put in, 
all kinds of things get put in without permits. <laughs> okay? Well, now, now and that's when we don't know where they are and we find them. But uh, sometimes these things can get put in without a permit. And I want to make sure that if we get something we're giving money out to, the cities are notified these people are doing this. It so like that we get notified. I think so, get too. Okay, yes. Yes, let's Mr. go. Mr. Sharkey. Uh, just a question on this building off of Supervisor Bennett. Um, because of the odd nature of this arrangement, I mean, it's, I have a certain red flag detector, if you will. Uh, is this board being used as a liability shield for some other organization? If the money's coming from us, worst case scenario, do we become liable for anything? That's an interesting question. The agreement that I reviewed on this um, confirms uh, your suspicions that it's a little bit of an odd agreement. It is between an individual entity, 3M Corporation, and this Ventura County Community Foundation with administrative support supplied by your board and your staff here. Uh, there's really very little connection between uh, what your board is being asked to do in this case and as well as other cases. How that shields us from liability is a very big and complex question. I'm sure that um, some creative minds on another side seeking liability and deep pocket um, uh, remuneration uh, could fashion an argument saying that our pass through or our administration of this adds to their liability. But that's just thinking very broadly and well, very the jury big. Can decide anything. So but yeah, I mean it's it just a, it's a question of the agreement and, and how it reads. This is all that you're asked to do is okay the use of this money and does it meet certain air quality um, uh, benefit analysis and that's all that you're being mm -hmm. asked to do at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I concur I think we need to look at this, this the nature of this agreement and see if it's actually the kind of thing we want to be involved It's going to result in this much time on uh, one time. <laughs> 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 kill this one. to make a motion. Yeah, Did you already do that? Okay. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Brennan, you're on. Um, ma Madam Chair, again, I would only, in closing, say I've seen the technology. It's been around for 10 years. It's been, uh, Los Angeles County's been using it. San Diego County's been using it for years. Um, and so I don't feel that we're stepping out of place here, but I do appreciate the board's input in regards to safety. So I'll go ahead and move the, re the recommended action. They've been using it in homes in Los Angeles? Yes. They have? Yeah. Okay, so they've been perfect. There is a motion. Okay, there is a second. And a second. And the objection to the motion? Was that a no? No, no objection. That's no right. objection. Right. Hearing no objection. <laughs> okay. It's oh. approved. Great leadership <laughs> by this board again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you already did. I yeah, right. yeah. Item 12, transfer of funds to the Venture County Transportation Commission for operation of the Dowell Route Transit. Ms. Parks, your favorite one. <laughs> Don't you right. want to keep Mr. Your Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about AB 27. Uh, 2766, and here we are. <laughs> in December of 1990, your board authorized the California Department of Motor Vehicles to collect motor vehicle registration fees for district programs required under the California Cleaner Act that are related to motor vehicles. Programs funded include direct motor vehicle emission reduction programs and related planning, monitoring, enforcement, and technical studies. Health and Safety Code also authorizes the district to fund programs implemented by other agencies to reduce motor vehicle emissions. For the past 16 years, the Ventura County Transportation Commission has operated the dial route program, and it's a toll-free number where people call to get transit information such as routing, affairs, et cetera. And for this fiscal year, the Transportation Commission staff has agreed to provide the district with an annual report on the effectiveness of the dial route program. Therefore, staff is recommending recommending your board authorize the payment of $25,000 to VCTC to continue the operation of dial route and this authorization would also include authorizing me to sign the attached memorandum of agreement. Questions? Mr. Brennan. Let me just comment as somebody that was pretty much uh, against this initially and in fact it was originally at 50,000 we took it down to 25 a few yeah, years back. We reduced back. it. And I think the opportunity on the uh, VCTC uh, new director came on here and said that hey it was something we're really looking at we're going to evaluate it we're going to monitor it that, that made me feel good I think that's what we should be doing at, so with our money I think yeah. I felt much 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 better about that when the website was down um, had an opportunity I tried the, the number I was on, was on a weekend but I did get a call back on Monday morning from somebody which but again it just showed that 
an opportunity for them to look at their system and work better. So I feel very comfortable uh, following the recommended action, uh, knowing that we're going to get a report back. And if, if it tells us, hey, we need the 25000 but hey, guess what? It's another program I think it will really work, maybe into the website, maybe something else, and we're getting direct results for that when we get those surveys back. I'll be happy to evaluate it then, but I have no problem moving this forward at this time. Ms. Parks? Yeah, it, my, my objection is just that this is something, that, and I you know, get to wear both hats as a VCTC commissioner, that this is something VCTC can fund from their own operating, and it is something they operate. Um, and the, I didn't make the connection until you pointed out that this is the, what I was talking about at board comments, this AB 2766 could just as well be given to all the cities and the county, and we can put all our employees in transit for free, you know? I mean, that, that or at least offer them the ability. So. I, I see even more objection to this because I think we could use these monies more effectively and I don't think it will hurt necessarily the service at BCTC. Comments? Other comments? You'd rather keep your money, wouldn't you? <laughs> Questions? <laughs> okay, pleasure the board. Move the approval. There's a motion. A second. And a second. But, but. Sure. Sure. Just to, to satisfy the concerns about the ongoing funding, I think the, I'd feel comfortable if the motion was made with the caveat that uh, BCTC was given the information that this may not be an automatic approval next year and that uh, there should be some discussion between our staff uh, and them to, uh, so that it's not just at the last minute whether they get the money or not. If, if, if we feel we're changing our direction and position and they will have plenty of time to know that that, uh, that it's not going to be available. I can make that, I can add that the motion with the idea that that will be a consistent every year. <laughs> if we have it every year. Every, yeah, if we have it every year. Let's get rid of it this year we don't do it. Okay. Um, Mr. Davis, how, how much is in this fund? Oh, it's, it's just what we have, we apply for it, is that right? Oh, actually we receive under 2766 four dollars per vehicle registered in the car the lion's share of that money is used for motor vehicle related programs at the district if motor vehicles just say they're accounting for 50 7 percent of the air pollutants in this county we pay for the air monitoring network 57 percent by dmv monies also when you're developing the air quality management plan a certain percentage of that inventory work is motor vehicle we pay that portion of our costs using these money so like many districts in California we utilize the majority of this money internally and we pass through the amount that we cannot legally use internally uh, what you brought up seemed like a very good idea on the transit passes and then this might be a, a good way next fiscal year to reallocate those funds well, well, we may actually at our next meeting. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I, just, I do want to point out one thing is, we'll talk about at the next meeting, is South Coast does have special, specific to them, legislation on use of the 2766. I, I, I'd just like to speak to the motion. Um, I, I think we have, VCTC is coming through a, a, an interesting transition period, the new executive director, I think, uh, uh, grab the bull by the horns on a number of issues uh, and my sense is I'm, I'd be very supportive of moving away from this but I'd like to create enough transition that we don't throw another hurdle uh, at them so if, it, if the motion would be uh, not that we're do it every year but the motion would be um, you know that we do it this year but we put them on notice that there's, there's, you know there's a strong likelihood that we may not do it again next year so they can properly plan and, and stuff with the staff that's where that's where I would go I would adjust my second if the maker of the motion was comfortable putting that in I think he indicated he would are you comfortable I'm comfortable okay. Fine. Okay. I think that's important. okay do you understand the motion yes you do thank you madam clerk motion and a second objection yeah uh, all any objection to the motion okay it passes with that caveat and we plot along. Item 13, status report on potential air quality improvement project at the Port of Lyme meeting. 
Uh, district staff is pursuing an air quality improvement program working with the Port of Wainimi. At this time, the main focus of Air District staff is the use of shore power instead of the use of a, built, a, a vessel's auxiliary engines while they're in port. And what's unique to Port Wainimi is when these vessels come in, un unlike the larger ports, there are no gantry cranes there to offload the cargo. The vessels run their auxiliary engines, which are in essence locomotive size engines. Uh, to power their own cranes, in essence, they're, they're offloading the bananas. According to CARB staff, uh, this type of project using shore power is cost effective for refrigerated vessels that carry produce, and these are known as reefers, and this is a large uh, share of the port's work. Last year we met with the port staff along with CARB to discuss the upcoming proposed CARB regulations for shore power. And the proposed regulation would place a requirement on the Port of Wainimi to use shore power or to reduce emissions by an equivalent amount for these refrigerated vessels. In July of this year, district staff had a conference call with CARB staff on the feasibility of utilizing Proposition 1B funds to assist the Port of Wainimi with this project. On September 3rd, we met with this uh, Port Wainimi staff to discuss their shore power plans. They've already retained a consultant that's starting to work on it, and they are on schedule to develop a plan for shore power by July of next year. They're also working with Southern California Edison to determine if there's adequate grid power at the Port of Wainini to implement this. And they also expressed an interest in applying for Proposition 1B funds if it's feasible. At Port of Wainini, there may be some unique challenges to implementing shore power. What's different here than at the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles is there are not terminal operators that also own ships. And what happens there, without that linkage at Port Wainimi, it's much more difficult for them to convince those vessel operators to retrofit their vessels to be able to accept the shore power. Port representatives are already working with their clients to see if they can work through this issue. Unfortunately, one banana company has already decided to switch to container ships, and that business is now headed to the Port of Los Angeles. We're planning to meet again with port representatives to continue our discussions on Proposition 1B funding for the shore power infrastructure. The other challenge that using Proposition 1B funds uh, presents is that it requires the port to install that equipment two years earlier than the CARB regulation would require it. So that would move their uh, date to get this project up, uh, rolling from 2014 up to 2012. And it may be a challenge to meet at the Port of Wainimi, but we're committed to continue working with them to reduce emissions and to reduce the cost of implementing this program. And that's all I have. Be happy to take questions. Okay. Any questions? Comment. Okay. It's huge. Uh, I mean, I think we see in the uh, correspondence uh, item that uh, Mr. Viegas, in the letter that he writes, talks about how um, vehicle, I mean, marine ve vessel emissions is, is going to dramatically rise in terms of the percentage of, in, of, of um, air pollution from 14 percent, I think, Mike, to 43 percent in Ventura County. And so this is cer certainly related, certainly, to that, those marine vessels. So really needed, number one, particularly needed as a social justice issue uh, down there in the Port Wainimi area. So I strongly encourage us to just push uh, push forward as much as we can with this. I, I was just going to comment that the banana boat going to L.A. is going to have to fix it up there, too, because they're also going to plug in, mm -hmm. as well as they're doing, um, some, you know, besides the trucks, that they're also going to require that they are of uh, cleaner burning fuels. They also um, have a voluntary ship speed reduction, and then that also reduces pollution. I thought it'd probably kill less whales too here too, but um, you know, these, there's a lot of things that we need to do towards reaching this, and this is definitely one of the ways to go. Yeah, well, one of the challenges there is, is the banana company actually decided instead of using the refrigerated container ship, I mean refrigerated, uh, the reefer, they went over to container ship. They went to a completely different ship. And that's why they moved. That's why they moved, so right. they wouldn't have to retro pay the vessel owner to retrofit. Right. They didn't. So they, the thing that's unique in, in Los Angeles and Long Beach is you have uh, Maverick, APL, China Lines, 
And they're building vessels that are so large they can't pass through the Panama Canal. They are dedicated Pacific Rim wow. to the Twin Ports, United States wow. trade. And they're going to stay on that route That's till that vessel is pulled out of service. So it's very effective for them to pursue this program. And they also own their own wharf. So it's a little trickier. Okay, receive and file action. Motion, second, receive and file. No objection. Next item, cancellation, October 14th. Motion, second. Any objection? No objection. Mr. Brennan, you got that finger up. What do you want? I, I just want to comment before <laughs> Mike goes away. I, when, Michael, before we adjourn, because we're going to do this so quickly. Um, Mike, the uh, CAPCOA conference coming up is the next week. Officers yeah. that has this AB32, could you just give a 30-second uh, update on that, why maybe it would be important for our board, board members to attend? Yeah, I provided your board, I think, the link to that uh, conference. It's the Future is Green, Long Beach, California, mm -hmm. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. I'll be looking at uh, uh, ways to reduce emissions from just about every type of source you can think of uh, heavily on. I'm going to be attending, the, but certainly for the marine vessels, the heavy-duty trucks. They're going to be looking at all these type of issues, both with an eye to air quality and carbon dioxide for climate change. I did too. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's a good conference, but I thought it was rather pricey, and I wanted to go for just one day, and I thought, yeah, just crash it. Okay, we have a uh, receive and file on correspondence. Receive and file on correspondence. Uh, move the recommendation. Motion or second, receive and file on correspondence. Any objection? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Standing committee upstairs. Thank you, thank you, thank you.